It's one of the biggest movie industries in the world, making hundreds of films and raking in tens of millions of pounds at the global box office. But in the last few years, Bollywood has been in crisis mode. I've come to Abu Dhabi to the IFA Awards to ask the question, can Bollywood survive? Are we rolling on the camera? Bollywood is the name given to the Hindi film industry, films that are made in Mumbai in India. Although it's known best for its big scale, all singing, all dancing extravaganzas, they actually produce films of all genres, just like Hollywood. Aifa and I were, we, we took birth together. <laughs> Looking amazing This as is the always. interview I've been waiting for. We love Rocky! I love BBC! We're in this camera just here. You know who's before me? That's Sunidhi Chauhan. Yes. You know, she's the epitome of... But you are bad boy Shah. Wala mere, wala mere, wala tu. Sorry, we're just in the... Yep, that's, that's Bollywood for you, baby. Well, about time someone noticed us. We need to improvise and try something new and try something risky. Girl, let's take a slow girl. I'm a long laster. Yeah, I'm a bad boy. But I'm a good girl. Which you are. Well done. <laughs> I'm Harun Rashid from the BBC Asian Network and I love Bollywood. So I've come here to Abu Dhabi where the IFA Awards are taking place. They're the Indian International Film Academy Awards. Normally, these awards are all about celebrating everything that is great about Hindi movies. But this year, I feel like there's some really important questions to ask to see where Bollywood will be in a few years' time. The Hindi film industry has been troubled with allegations, some accusing the music of lacking originality, others saying streaming platforms are making more exciting content. Plus, South Indian films are reigning globally, and for Bollywood, nepotism continues to cast doubts over how fair an industry it really is. Show me the What's going on with Bollywood? What's going Pathan on? Pathan just released, right? Yeah, I think I think Pathan was like the biggest hit of all time. Pathan's a wham bam action thriller starring arguably the biggest Bollywood movie star in the world, Shah Rukh Khan and Deepika Padukone one of this generation's most loved actresses. The film opened to record numbers in January this year, but its success is more of an anomaly than the norm. And one Patan or one Rocky or Rani ki Prem Kahani, a big family drama that released in July, can't save all of Bollywood. In reality, Bollywood has slowly become overshadowed by regional blockbusters made in other film industries in India, away from Mumbai. The Tamil film industry is based in Chennai. Telugu cinema is made in Hyderabad. Kerala is the home of Malayalam movies and Kannada films come from the state of Karnataka. The grandeur, the action sequences, the fantasy, the performances, it's all winning big with audiences that were traditionally loyal to Bollywood. And that's despite the fact that these films are made in different languages. They star actors who are unfamiliar to most Bollywood viewers and the cultural nuances are specific to each part of the country. It's reached a point where now, three out of the top five most successful Indian films of all time are not Bollywood. I think we're very quick to jump to conclusions and say that, you know, Pushpa's working and RRR is working and KGF is working, but um, they are different industries. The difference that you see between Bollywood and Telugu is the difference between Kannada and Telugu. So you cannot consider it all of South, yeah. like PS1 is Tamil, yeah. uh, RRR and Pushpa are Telugu. Uh, I think it, what we need to ask is that there is globally a, a restructuring that's happening and the kind of films that are going to work is possibly going to change post the pandemic. Uh, and if you talk about those two, three films, and we had a Brahmastra, we had a Bhul Bhulaya, we had a Drishyam. Drishyam 2 was the second highest grossing Bollywood movie of 2022. It was a remake of the Malayalam 
film of the same name. And that seems to be an increasing trend in Bollywood to remake these South Indian blockbusters and try to cash in on their success, but in Hindi. 2019's Kabir Singh, a remake of the 2017 Telugu blockbuster Arjun Reddy, 2022's Vikram Veda, a remake of the 2017 Tamil hit Vikram Veda, 2023's Shezada, a remake of the 2020 Telugu film Alavai Kunta Parumalu. And these are just a few. We don't really like to say yeah. South Indian cinema and, and North Bollywood. Indian cinema. And Why this comparison? It's Indian cinema. Okay. We take great pride when uh, Natu Natu wins or Correct. RRR or Bahubali. We take great pride. In fact, we go again and again to see those movies in the theatre. So. It's media likes to do this, right? I don't like doing it. It's because I see all the media and I love Bollywood, right? It's yeah. something we all we love. All we love films. We all love we good all films. films. Those good films are winning international acclaim. SS Raja Molli's Telugu action drama RRR bagged an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for this song, Natu Natu. But why isn't it being recognised at IFA? We have, I think, over 18 unique language film industries within India. How do you award all of them? There's a technical issue over there. Um, in the utopian world, it would be brilliant if we can award the best in Indian cinema in entirety. I mean, just the logistics of putting all those films together and choosing the best would be Herculean. It certainly feels like Bollywood can no longer be representative of all Indian cinema on a global platform. But IFA is about much more than just the films, it's a show. Stars perform, actors interact with the media and their fans, celebrities use the opportunity to network, producers market their films. The culture and customs in South Indian film industries is so unique, so IFA have decided to hold a separate annual event to honour them. In the South, it's very, very different. You know, male stars don't perform. They don't go out and kind of publicize their movie like Bollywood, where every time, you know, they're going into theaters, going to cities. Uh, so South is very, very different. So we're kind of breaking the ice with them to saying, listen, if you want to do something global, right, your movies are global, whether it's Triple R or KGF, or there's some great movies coming out from, from regional film. So I think, it's, I think what's happened, it's become, Technically, it's becoming mainstream, you know, and there's a lot of collaboration happening. And it's not just the storylines or the style of filmmaking where South Indian cinema is winning. It's their music too. So much so that popular South Indian music composers are being roped in to bring their signature style to Hindi movies. For decades, Bollywood was synonymous with melodious music and soulful soundtracks, ranging from romantic love songs to heartbreak tracks. Dance floor anthems. But for some, even the music has become plagued with a lack of creativity. What's going on with Bollywood music? <laughs> oh, well, I'm just doing my job. I, I love singing for movies. What I do is I try and pick and choose, you know, whatever I like. Because I've been singing for like more than 20 years in this industry and I don't want to get bored of myself. Music is still very popular and there's still some stellar soundtracks being released. They regularly top the official Asian music chart here in the UK on the BBC Asian Network. But with the shift in direction in the style of films being made, there seems to be much less opportunity for original soundtracks. For me, uh, it's the script, always the st If it's a uh, love article or a job we made where the character is a Punjabi then your uh, the the music has to be like influenced with Punjabi words and Punjabi uh, uh, things but if it's a burfi or a uh, say uh, 
jagga jaasus then the whole soundscape is different or if it's a aidile mushkil it needs angst because the character has angst so like this the music varies with the character One of the most common criticisms of recent Bollywood albums is that there are just far too many remixes and remakes of existing hit songs, particularly from the 90s and particularly from Punjabi music. They're often jazzed up with a faster tempo beat, more bass, quite often a catchy rap too. But for some, it seemed to be a cop out from making original music. I've noticed in the last two years you've done no Bollywood remixes yeah, at all. Yeah, it was a conscious decision. You know, you do it for the fun of it. Sometimes you see, oh, this, you know, this is a great thing. Uh, but then you realize uh, you have so much uh, uh, of your own stuff that you want to deliver out to the audience. And also, you know, somewhere down the line, um, they were not being done in a in in good taste. Uh, you know, it, it was just. commercial property what do you think bollywood needs to do to survive right now i don't know if i'm allowed to say it uh, say it it's fine it's a safe space they just need to have balls you know they know they need to reinvent themselves it's going to take time but this is the time if you don't do it you'll just you know fade away <laughs> Recently, audiences have been outrightly rejecting remixes and remakes. Instead, it's original songs that have really hit the big time in terms of music charts and social media trends. And it's allowing music composers to be more creative too. India is one place where they don't care about trends. Unlike uh, unlike a music company, but directors look at something which has got soul, which has got uh, attractiveness in what we do. So that's one of the reasons why I don't stick to one trend. I try different kind of stuff. Sometimes I go retro, sometimes I go modern, sometimes so I get the freedom to do it. And quite often when any industry is churning out a lot of noise, the good stuff stands out even more. I recently heard your song in Jubilee, which is an Amazon Prime series where you sing this beautiful ghazal. and it really highlighted just how bad everything else is not in that show but in bollywood in general there's remixes there is reworkings there is a lack of creativity so what does bollywood need to do right now to survive or to get out of this point that is at right now when it comes to playback singing i think it's the films they um, that require uh, this kind of content i mean jubilee is A, a film like that where these kind of songs were required so then amit trivedi just came out and there's such calm in his music and i remember saying this to him you know when as soon as i heard the song i was like how are we doing this i mean the film called for it and amit has done a great job i had a fantastic time singing it thank god for jubilee it happened and i think it's a beautiful song i really enjoyed singing it Trivedi is one of Bollywood's most versatile music composers and quite often the go-to man for alternative soundtracks that require more than just the staple formula. I always always operate from only one place that's the brief of the director and the vision of the director. Every all my music comes from there. I'm a very very submissive kind of a composer who just submits to my my directors and they just take me to a direction I just flow there and explore. And let's explore. The thing is, filmmakers think that audiences won't like those new original songs. They think they want remixes. By but Gore Pe Savar was a great example of a song that was. It was a TikTok hit. It was an Instagram reel hit. Do you think that will convince more filmmakers? Absolutely, absolutely. See, these two films that you just mentioned about Kala and Jubilee, they were naturally set at uh, at that era during that era, which is 40s and 50s. So and it was musical. Both are musical because one is Kala is dealing with singers and. Uh, Jubilee is dealing with the actors and the industry as such, so it was inevitable to have music and songs of that era. Because the story asked for it. Jubilee and Kala, two soundtracks Amit has recently composed, were both made for streaming platforms, and that's another challenge Bollywood is facing. Since 2017, Indian cinema has been competing with the likes of Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, who have set up shop in South Asia and seem to be doing everything that Bollywood isn't. They're braver with their storylines, from gritty crime series like Sacred Games to mature dramas like Gehraiya, which was about infidelity. 
They're mostly free from the shackles of censorship that cinema releases face. And audiences are lapping up the opportunity to see their favorite movie stars in the comfort of their home and on their own terms. It's also created a plethora of stars of the streaming world. I, I couldn't believe that roles, are, roles like these are written uh, with so much depth and nuance. And when I read them, I get very fascinated because it's scary uh, to take up, take up a part like Hamza in Darling. But I kind of feel scared to play them and that's why I feel like it's a challenge to overcome. And I go out and, and play ball with it. It feels like cinema just is not making challenging, exciting roles. How accurate would that be compared to the streamers? I mean, Darling was meant to be a theatrical, but then, then it suffered. I mean, we had to do whatever we had to do to, uh, to find a release uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but I, I don't see um, uh, the, what you notice, I don't see that happen because I just saw Pushpa, which came out in theatre, and it's such an incredible part. And it's something that is for the big screen. And I would love to do something on big screen. Pushpa is a Telugu movie, and despite Vijay's ambitions to star in a film of that scale, the truth is that the more versatile characters are being written for the small screen, on streaming services, or the OTTs as they're commonly referred to in South Asia. You all know it, it's just expanded the whole pool, I mean enormously, in terms of just the content that gets created, the kind of roles we get to essay now, because in a film it's like even if actors like us have roles, they're, they're good roles, but you know, it's, it's, it's small. Uh, but in, a, in, a, in, a, in the OTT, we really get very well fleshed out, wonderfully uh, nuanced characters to play, which is just a dream of any actor, right? I love being back. Content on streaming platforms has become so popular, there are several other Indian streaming services like Hotstar and Z5, which are gaining more and more subscribers here in the UK too. Hotstar, which is owned by Disney, have enticed audiences by having huge celebrities starring in adaptations of award-winning international shows. Ajay Devgan stars in Rudra, a remake of Luther. Anil Kapoor and Aditya Roy Kapoor appear in an adaptation of The Night Manager. And Kajol leads The Trial, which is a reversion of The Good Wife. The shift towards uh, good content is happening and we're in the point where it's in the in between from there to where we have to reach. So I think that's the strange part because uh, good content is not working in the cinema, but it's working on Netflix. You know, it's it's really funny because there's an, a, a roundtable interview of my father with some other actors in 2017. And he, he was like, in three years time, none of the films that are working now will work and everybody will be watching them on Netflix. Films which are working today, I'm telling you in three years, they will not be working. Yeah, the people will be watching totally it on Netflix. This. I right. totally agree with you on this. Yeah. And in 2020, the box office collapsed, of course, because of COVID, but then of also because of the exposure of good cinema we were getting from outside. So I think our audience is now finally getting, you know, the exposure that they need to become, uh, to absorb intelligent cinema. There are clearly advantages of having streaming platforms creating original content in India, but it's also massively harmed the box office potential of some good films like 83, a big sports biopic based on the life of former Indian cricket captain Kapil Dev, which released in the middle of the pandemic. I don't look at these short-term uh, cyclical patterns because the industry has been through uh, phases where a lot of its films are not doing well, even without COVID, much decades before COVID. Uh, but it did bounce back, it, 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 it reached new heights, and I'm very optimistic it'll reach newer heights also now. Uh, yes, uh, in the recent past, a lot of our stories have not been connecting. It's a pattern, and uh, we'll soon be celebrating and raising a toast to Bollywood all over again. I beg to differ a little bit and I'm, I tend to be a little more undiplomatic. I think you're right. We are creating content that's not up to scratch, but I think that's also because so many other factors. And I'm hoping that we'll throw caution to the winds and just, I wish 
we went back to storytelling yeah, because that that's how I mean I've seen Kabir operate and he just wants to tell that story in the best manner possible and I love that it's, it's amazing and I hope the audiences do come back because 83 was beautiful it was beautifully Thank made you. it was wonderful Thank and, you I, so much. I, and it got its due on streaming like Netflix yeah. people loved it on there yeah. but it was a big screen experience yes, yes. It was. And it should, so it's, it's a real pity I have been begging Kabir and he looks at me like I'm some sort of moron but I'm like you need to re-release this film Film because yeah. it deserves the big screen yeah. and it's just unfortunate that we we released the day COVID part two released and part I think it's, it broke our hearts it really did one of the things Bollywood's been criticized for over the last few years is nepotism it's existed for years and years and years where children of famous people managed to get into the industry without having to actually prove their acting talent but for the last few years and particularly with the rise of social media as well more and more people have started questioning this it's something I've been asking Bollywood stars about for years I want to talk to you about what your own personal experiences have been so far I do feel that maybe, yeah, the, that first opportunity kind of comes in a little more easily to uh, uh, to someone who belongs to a film family because firstly, they're, they're seen around, you know, they're, they're in that atmosphere and the directors or whoever's working, they, they do see you somewhere or the other. So they do have you in mind. It's even very hard for star kids. It's very hard for star kids. Trust me, why? Because the question itself is a little negative in that so? sense. Okay. Perception. I mean, the minute you say star kid, it sounds like, oh, he got a little easy. We can't deny the fact that a lot of people uh, follow the footsteps of their fathers and mothers who are already in the film industry, maybe even have easier access to getting into films than people from the outside. And it's, it's, I think that's true. We can't deny that and keep saying equal number of people come by giving uh, Akshay Kumar's example or just mine. Do you think you had an advantage in finding this script because you are the daughter of Saif Ali Khan and Amrita Singh? Yes, I do. Um, this has become a conversation back home. Uh, recently more than it was, this word nepotism that a lot of people talk about. And I don't think that I can run away from that. I don't, I think it would be hypocritical and even wrong for me to say that it doesn't exist. The word nepotism has become a monster which has damaged a lot of goodwill towards Bollywood, largely because of two reasons. In 2018, actress Gangana Ranaut appeared on the popular chat show Coffee with Karan, where she accused filmmaker Karan Johar of being difficult with her because of her lack of connections in the industry. It created huge discussion about the struggles of those not from the industry. What's your name? Masur. Inka. Two years later, the death of actor Sushant Singh Rajput, someone who had no connections to Bollywood when he moved to Mumbai, raised further questions around the lack of equal opportunities for outsiders. My life is Hindi, but my wife is English. Nepa babies and star kids are terms used as insults, and the children of movie stars, even those who were outsiders themselves, are having to work twice as hard to prove their worth. Since we did our first interview, what I've noticed and really appreciated is the way that you go and speak to the media when you attend an event, the way you go and greet each photographer individually, the respect that you show each one of them. And I wonder if the reason you'd... Are you overcompensating for your privilege when you do that in any manner? That's a great question. That's a great... I have, I have you know, um, reflected upon... How I deal with my privilege is that, you know, I give auditions. I don't use the privilege to get jobs, you know, to get uh, work. I give my auditions. I train uh, diligently and I work really hard towards becoming a better actor. And I just finished the film and the producer of that film came and said, I'm, your, I'm a huge fan of yours. Like, why? And he's like, first, I've been looking at the footage and it's amazing. And second, I cannot believe Irfan Khan's son is coming and giving auditions and your audition was like, it was insane. And we are so proud of you. And that made me feel so good because I was like, yeah, I didn't pick up the phone. And even though, you know, Mama has the contacts, so even though she would never do it. But I gave that audition. I give auditions. I cannot imagine myself getting work not having earned it, you know, because then there will always be that self-doubt. I didn't earn this. I think it's for me more than anybody else that I, I earn the job 
and then i feel like yes i deserve my place at this table because the self doubt will you know it will swallow me if i use my privilege to get work it's hard to ignore just how many stars at ifa are here because their first roles were handed to them or because they had easy access to people from the business abhishek bachchan is the son of one of bollywood's greats amitabh bachchan Hrithik Roshan's dad Rakesh Roshan made his first movie for him. Even Vicky Kaushal is the son of a famous action director. But those who have made it on their own merit feel that much more satisfied. It's not been easy. I wouldn't say that it's been easy and I wouldn't say anything good in life comes easy either. Um not coming from this world meant that each brick had to be placed meticulously on my own with the help of my parents who are ever so supportive. For the thousands of outsiders who try, only a few make it. And for Nora Fatehi, it was even harder. I came in a time where Katrina Kaif was, you know, taking over. I'm Zoya. Friends call me Z. I'm Manish. My friends call me Doordarshan. बहुत खराब जोक था Katrina Kaif is one of the biggest success stories for any outsider. Not only did she have no connections, she also came from a different country and didn't know the language. Today, she's among the most popular movie stars of all time. I think my second month in India, I was okay, Nora, if you're going to do this, then you got to go out all out. You need to change your the way you speak. You need to tone down that Canadian accent. You need to tone down your body language. It's got to go more with you need to assimilate with the environment. Isn't And that, that includes No, it's not. That includes learning the language. That includes, you know, learning the traditions, the cultures, assimilating with people, you know. Um letting them feel like you're one of them. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's it for Ifa for another year. My journey here in Abu Dhabi has come to an end. I set out on a mission to find out if Bollywood can survive this period that it's going through. Do you think Bollywood can survive? Yeah, definitely. Of course, it's just a bad patch. Um it's just a storm that's going to pass. And it's also a time for Bollywood to go through the evolution. So how people are going to make certain content that will fit OTT and how they'll make certain content that will fit the theater. Um I think the audience has changed you know and i think just the filmmakers need to read the audience a little bit better it keeps rotating it's a cycle you know if we knew every film would be great and every film would make millions of dollars but sometimes you never know what what the public is looking for when we start asking the same question and start saying oh hindi films are not working then we're creating that narrative which is not true if there's one thing you think bollywood could do better what would it be oh uh, I think letting go of the old ways. What we, like what? Like what old ways? Like they always have a mantra that hey this works and this doesn't work. And it has worked in the past, but I think post covid things have really shifted for all of us. And nobody actually knows what's going to happen. Give me Om Shanti Om too. Okay, giving it to you right. When? Right, I'll just finish this and start writing it right now. I have the same question. Why I'm a fan. Why are you making more movies? There's so much pressure. I will. I will, but the, the great idea is to strike. You know, I I want to say something. You know, everyone wants to say something to the world and through your movies you can. What I've learned is that Bollywood is not dead. It's not dying. It's not even wounded really. But as audiences taste and even the nature of fame changes, Bollywood's relevance rests upon its evolution. In fact, it's already slowly happening. Since my return from IFA, Rocky or Rani ki Prem Kahani has become a blockbuster at the cinema and its director Karan Johar has been praised for bringing back Bollywood. So many love stories that have been slowly and steadily finding love. Um so I knew that love was being watched. You know this whole phenomena of action of course is the big event action film is going to be ruling the roost always because there are large audiences for that genre but secretly I hope that you know we could tell our love stories as well because that's what we grew up on you know I'm just happy that I could do this and do it uh, with a way that brought love from the audience New actors will emerge new songs will be recorded and new screenplays written and you can be confident that future generations will be learning the dance moves and lining up to watch the stars of the next era light up the screen 
If anything, South Indian cinema and streaming platforms, as well as the criticism of the music and nepotism, are only making Bollywood up its game to produce better content in hopefully a more fair industry.